Welcome to Talking Pints. If you're one of the hundreds of millions of people around the world who've seen the film of The Sound of Music, you'll know that it ends. Warning, plot spoiler, if you're one of those three guys living in the jungles of New Guinea or the only people on the planet who haven't seen it, plot spoiler, uh, the film ends with the Von Trapp family uh, fleeing Austria and climbing up the Alps to head for Switzerland. If they were ever going to make Sound of Music 2, it would begin by showing that something went terribly wrong. They took a wrong turn and came down in the green mountains of Vermont, where Baron von Trapp bought a farm, and the family turned that farm into a hugely successful ski resort, which has been running for well over half a century now, uh, almost 70 years, I think, uh, and uh, have diversified into brewing. So we're actually drinking here Von Trapp beer with authentic Von Trapps. Johannes Von Trapp, uh, who is the son of Baron Von Trapp and uh, Maria, and Sam Von Trapp, who is the grandson of uh, the Baron and his lady. Uh, so uh, what do they say in Austria? Prost? Prost. 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 Prosit. Great. Prosit. Prosit. So this is actual Von Trapp beer. They didn't get this in the, uh, in the film or in the musical, uh, but you can drink Von Trapp beer. And Sam, uh, tell us wh what that is that you're, you're drinking. Yeah, so I'm drinking the Oktoberfest here. Oktoberfest. Coming to the end of the Oktoberfest season. We had our celebration long ago, because of course we do ours in September. But right. still a good beer to drink on a... <laughs> on a gray new, uh, almost November day. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. And you had us, you've uh, broken, you on the wagon I, for a couple of weeks, but you've broken that for us. What I you, want you? to honor your show by uh, having a Hellas. A Hellas? And which one have I got here? I think you I'm have a Dunkel. A Dunkel. Dunkel. Now, they're all very Teutonic names, your beers. Well, the beers, my, my idea was to recreate the sort of beer that you can get if you're driving through Austria Mm. and you stop in a small village and you go mm. into the inn mm. and you order uh, a meal and you have a beer with it. Right. And uh, afterwards you don't have a headache, you don't feel uh, sleepy, uh. You, you just uh, feel wonderful. Yeah. That's... So my goal was to create the same kind of beer. Well, that, let me ask you about that because um, your family were very glad to get out of Austria, as, as we all know from, from the plot of the show. Uh, but one thing they must have regretted when they landed here is uh, that by common consent, if you've got uh, Germanic tastes in beer, the beer in America back then was pretty bloody awful, wasn't it? Well, uh, having gone to college here, I have had a few beers on occasion. <laughs> and. Uh, um, I, I wanted to create what I described, you know, a, uh. a light beer that you could drink with your lunch and not right. feel sleepy, still be able to work afterwards. Okay, uh, well, I'll, I'll test that uh, thesis. Good. Uh, see whether I uh, doze off after the uh, commercial break. Let me ask you how it's been going during this very weird time we're living in. I, every, everyone's heard about mm, the problems good. with the uh, supply chain and everything. I was, as I was driving uh, along, uh, I heard something on the radio uh, a couple of hours ago that said there is now a glass shortage and there are unlikely to be bottles to put beer in. And they were oh. talking about serving cham uh, uh, putting champagne in pouches. You know, like those little oh, pouches yeah. of pineapple <laughs> like a juice. Tetra pack or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, maybe it's finally time for us to sell the last pallets of uh, <laughs> clean bottles we have in there because we are now putting all of our beer in cans, mm. um, and actually we haven't bottled for about two years now. Mm. Mm. But there have been shortages on multiple different fronts. Uh, aluminum has been a big one. Cans right. have really affected all the breweries. Right. At one point, there was a CO2 shortage. Right. At one point, it was difficult for us to make sure our malt would arrive on time because all of our malts come from Bamberg, wait, wait, Germany. Wait, wait, wait a minute, so there's a CO2 shortage? There was. That's, I think that's it's uh, carbon... Uh, carbon dioxide. Well, wait, wait a minute, we, isn't, isn't the thing... Yeah, we produce the, CO2. 
Yeah, but aren't yeah. we being told, aren't they all just meeting in Glasgow now to reduce CO2? Right. Yeah. And yet there's a global shortage of CO2? Well, How does that happen? And you know, some breweries have enough technology to be able to capture the CO2 from fermentation and scrub it and then reuse it. We're right. not at that scale yet, although I've heard there are some new technologies. My dad and I have been talking about recently some newer technologies allowing that. But in reality, when the beer is fermenting, usually the CO2 is just bubbling out. Right. And it's a lot easier for a brewery of our scale to just buy CO2 uh, for whatever other uses we need. We use it for purging tanks. We don't actually have to use that much CO2 to carbonate our beers because we're able to naturally carbonate them. So we only need to brush up the carbonation for a, the final 5 or 10% that they require. But, but just, just, so, cause I, uh, just to get the hang of it, you can actually have in market terms a CO2 shortage. And, and at, the, at the same time as the politicians are all saying there's too much CO2. I think it's yeah. a, a distribution issue. Right. You know, you, you've seen pictures of the 50 odd ships anchored off the port of Los Angeles. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Containers of CO2. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's also a matter of controlled CO2 versus the CO2 that's just being expelled. Okay. But, uh, but okay. no, the. the Supply chain issues have been a challenge on, on many different yeah. fronts for us. And sometimes it's simple little things like t-shirts right. or discs, our logo discs for the disc golf course that have our Von Trapp Brewing logo on them. But you know, we, you get around them uh, each time. We've managed to continue to produce beer and it's been nice to see people really focusing on lagers. A lot of people I think have been yeah. Realizing that during the pandemic they were drinking a lot and they decided that maybe they don't need to drink 8% alcohol beers anymore Maybe they want something a little more sustainable like this 4.9% Hellas. So su uh, sustainable sustainable alcohol. Absolutely. That's a uh, That's a good that's a good concept uh, l Let me ask you something because you mentioned the t-shirts the, the thing about this is it you you aren't in a merchandising business this isn't part of a Sound of Music theme park. Everyone made a gazillion dollars out of the Sound of Music. Rogers and Hammerstein made a fortune. 20th Century Fox made a fortune. But you guys didn't because your mother sold the rights for $9,000, which there must be times there were when you have, uh, have thought, I wish she'd had a better lawyer <laughs> or I wish she'd had a better business manager. Or True. Uh, but then my mother never listened to anyone, so mm. when she wanted to do something, she went ahead and did it. Right, right. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, the film people were very decent, and Mary Martin, who mm. portrayed my mother on Broadway, yeah. was very decent, and they made sure that we got a small participation in, in that. So we did get something. Right, right. It, it isn't. It wasn't only the nine thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm but, glad. To, but I'm, the original rights were sold for that. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm very glad to hear that. But it does mean that you have to make uh, everything you've done since we, the sound of music a to, real business. We need to make uh, our living here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And now you you have a slightly ambivalent attitude to. Uh, what people think they know about your family. I, I, I was... Uh, You've been doing your research. Well, no, I heard that from your niece many, many uh, years ago that, you know, she used to talk about the real songs that your family, and she'd call them the Von Trapps songs, and then she'd call the Rogers and Hammerstein ones the non trap songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was her little, uh, that, that was her little thing. But I, I was astonished to hear that the piano player at the Trap Family Lodge, when you walk in the room, he doesn't play the Lonely Goat Herd or Do Re Mi, he plays Desperado, which is an eagle his, song. His, his transitions were wonderful. <laughs> if, if he saw me coming, he would go from uh, uh. climb every mountain to <laughs> Desperado or something similar. It was wonderful. <laughs> and, is, and that's just because he was sensitive to uh, uh, what, a certain exasperation with all the... Well, you can imagine that I, I've heard the songs a few times, mm, mm. and I've had to sing them a few times. Right. So it's nice to, when I go to the lounge, uh, it's nice to sit down with a beer and listen to something else. 
Well, it's, 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 uh, it's flattering in a way to have the story of your family be famous. But I remember your, your brother Werner, who uh, his name was changed to Kurt yep. in the film. So he, he couldn't understand why, you know, Hollywood had felt the need to improve on your names, as it were, that even that can't be accurate. It's a, it, it's a mixed blessing. Yeah, Isn't it's definitely it? a mixed blessing. Yeah, and you, Sam, are you uh, you're kind of uh, clear of all that because you're an, a generation removed from it. Yeah, I think it's easier for our generation. I, I grew up uh, sort of inheriting some of the same attitudes mm. of mm. keeping the movie a little bit at arm's length. Mm. Um, but then over time, it was easier for me. My name wasn't changed. Right. You know, it was my grandfather who was portrayed as being more distant from his children, you know, not, yeah. not my father. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've been able to make peace with the sound of music. We do history tours here at the hotel, and it's become a pretty big part of what we do during certain times of the year. And those chances to interact with the public and hear people's experiences of how sound of music had a positive impact on them. Um, has really helped us to get away from focusing on the factual discrepancies and instead <laughs> recognize that the, the overall message of the values and principles of The Sound of Music are all accurate. You, you ha came from a large family and uh, in, in uh, the show and, and the film, uh, you all look at, you're all children, you're all cute, everyone looks as if they're getting along. And, and after your mother died, which I think is something like 35 years ago now, something like that, uh, then, there, then there were, for a while, there were all these like uh, fractious disputes and you weren't getting along and thing. You've very much been, your line as it was, very much been the driving force behind the business of the Von Trapp family. And you seem to be in a situation now where even if, if everybody lost interest in the film and the show tomorrow, there'd still be a Von Trapp a brewing company and a trap family lodge. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Um, I think our, our property here has become a, a resort that it appeals regionally and, and even nationally. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have a loyal clientele. And, uh, the, the property is, is definitely a, a business that will continue for a long time. So we went from having our quietest period in our history when we were shut down completely yeah. during the early part of the pandemic to just having had now in 2021 our busiest summer and foliage ever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's been uh, exciting. We've all uh, brushed off our skills to do different things, uh, jump into the dish pit and wash some dishes on the day that no dishwashers showed up or right. uh, <laughs> on a Saturday when we're turning over 84 guest houses for a new group coming in, uh, maybe go clean some bathrooms. You, you've um, always done it a bit like that because uh, Elizabeth, your cousin, told me she used to make the dandles yes. for yeah. the waitresses yeah. here. So there's so, always been an and, element and of that. The family always had a strong work ethic. Part yeah. of the story that people don't know is the family actually lost uh, most of their fortune um, before they came to the United States. So, right. Uh, they were already working hard. Is the trick a balancing act? Um, you, you were, when, when there was a little, uh, a lonely goat herd knick-knack that was sold in the gift shop here, they kept it out of sight from you because they knew you wouldn't like that. I notice, you know, uh, you're not naming your beer, you know, high on a hill was a lonely barmaid. You're not <laughs> like, uh, you're, you're, you're not going all in on that kind of thing. You're, it's a balancing act for you. It is a balancing act. I mean, I, I'm perfectly happy using our name, mm. uh, which uh, I think is, is well known and well recognized. Right. Um, I, I don't want to use uh, sort of the Asats fame right. of the film. Right, right. But uh, I'm perfectly happy uh, using our name and, and our reputation in marketing our product. Well, it is a name that, uh, as I said, hundreds of millions of people still know, which is kind of amazing because it's over 60 years now since the, uh, the Broadway show and almost as long since the film. So long, it's terrific beer. Long may, it, uh, long may it continue. And this is Thank you. a legacy that I think will, uh, will compete with, uh, with the songs on that. Thank you, Johannes von Trapp. And prost to you.
Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.